starts <laughs> yes thank you very much uh now uh Let's get started. Uh, we have all been uh, in Zoom before. We'll have some housekeeping announcements in a few moments. My name is Andrei Kulishbrook. I am strategy and development advisor of the Common Fund for Commodities. I will be doing part of this presentation. And on the other part of this presentation, my colleague, Mr. Nikolaus Krome, the chief operations officer of the Common Fund for Commodities will take over. And he's also here with us. Yeah. Some uh, housekeeping announcements, uh, which uh, should be familiar to all. So firstly, if you lose the connection, or if any of us, uh, the presenters, lose the connection, uh, no, don't panic. Uh, simply reconnect, and we will also do the same. Uh, we are still on distance working so we are in different places even in different countries so uh, we can be sure that one of us will continue the presentation even if the technology fails us. it is a lot easier to collect and respond to the questions that are typed in the chat box and we will watch the the chat messages uh, if you uh, feel you need to ask a question, uh, do consider typing it. Otherwise, when there's space for questions, uh, raise your hand, then we will unmute the microphone and you will be able to uh, make your comments. Also, uh, to keep the noise level in the meeting room uh, to the minimum, uh, we will ask, uh, we will keep all microphones muted unless the person requests the floor to speak by uh, using the raise hand function in the Zoom. In, Zoom. Uh, in smaller meetings, we can watch the uh, meeting room for simply somebody waving at us. It might still work, but uh, because all the participants do not fit on the screen, uh, we might miss you. So please use uh, Zoom uh, software function to raise a hand. So uh, that, uh, oh yes, one final housekeeping announcement. Uh, at the end of the meeting, we will circulate a questionnaire asking for your views about this uh, presentation, about this webinar. And we will be asking how you found out about this webinar because it is important to us to reach out to the right people. So with that, uh, we can proceed to the substance of the presentation unless uh, well, let's let's proceed to the substance. There will be space for questions later. So um, first, we we'll look at the Common Fund for Commodities. It is not a widely known organization. We're fairly small and highly specialized in our segment. And the first issue I wanted to cover is why commodities are important. Uh, in uh, principle, we all know that commodities are important. Uh, commodities is just about everything we consume and use on a daily basis. But also commodities have an important development dimension. And the Common Fund is targeting impact investing by uh, placing uh, resources for the commodity sector. Commodity dependence, that's the uh, development issue affects more than 2 billion people worldwide. So there is an extremely high demand for resources available for impact investing projects in the commodity sector. Also in the CFC, we recognize that uh, things have not been particularly nice for the global commodity sector and for people who depend on commodities in the recent months and in the recent couple of years. Uh, because the pandemic and the climate issues have caused significant disruptions to the global supply chain of commodities. And of course, people who depend the most on commodities are the people who are also the poorest in the commodity value chains. Disruption to the global commodity value chains has caused a lot of hardship. We recognize that 
we do try to develop and enhance our instruments to be able to offer impact financing to those people who can use it effectively to improve the livelihood, to uh, reach out for sustainable development goals. A few words about uh, the Common Fund for Commodities itself. Uh, Common Fund is an international financial organization. Uh, Common Fund has been established in 1989 under the United Nations. Uh, we are not a specialized agency of the United Nations, but the agreement establishing the Common Fund for Commodities has been negotiated in the United Nations. And we are strongly affiliated with the UN organizations, with the system of the UN. Uh, the CFC has only one headquarter, and that's in Amsterdam. Uh, the operations started in 1989, as I mentioned. Uh, the secretariat is very small. The organization has a lot of projects, but we are very small. And we do not operate regional offices. We do not have regional offices. Everything is done from the headquarters from Amsterdam. Currently, the CFC has 100 countries. So the Common Fund is a membership organization and membership belongs to member countries. So when a country joins the CFC, uh, companies in this country and projects operating in this country for the benefit of this country can apply for financing from the CFC, from the Common Fund. Uh, the Common Fund also has a number of institutional members with whom we cooperate to be able to better identify and address issues in the global commodity value chain, uh, which are frequently a transnational, which cross the national borders, involve a lot of global issues there. Uh, a bit on our uh, track record, uh, over uh, 32 years of existence of the CFC, uh, we have financed over 440 different projects all around the globe. Uh, the total value of the projects uh, has almost reached 800 million. Well, this year we will exceed this number. Uh, and uh, we look forward to strengthen our uh, pipeline of projects. We look forward to strengthen the uh, projects that we are receiving from you. In the, this, the, you are the clients, you are the you are uh, the, the basis, the reason for existence of CFC. Uh, to say a few words about the vision and mission of the Common Fund, and this you can also see on, uh, on the CFC website. Uh, we aim, as I said, to strengthen and diversify the commodity sector and to make commodities a major contributor to economic development and social development and poverty alleviation and generally achievements of the sustainable development goals. The slogan of the CFC is making commodities work for everyone. That is everyone who is involved in commodities should be earning a different, a, a decent and equitable and rewarding livelihood out of commodities. The mission of the CFC is to strengthen the income generating capacity of commodity producers and mitigating vulnerability to ensure sustainable uh, economic well being. I'm uh, just checking the chat box and I thank you for, uh, for introducing yourselves in the chat box. No more questions. Please. So we proceed now to the open call for proposals. Since 2012, the doors of the CFC are open to project proposals from anyone. That is any organization, that is any, uh, any project that meets the qualification of criteria, the qualification criteria of the CFC can be submitted to the Common Fund for Commodities and will be considered in the process of the open call for proposals. Uh, we'll talk about it in more detail, but in summary, it can be a governmental organization, it can be an NGO, it can be a private business, it can be a cooperative. Anybody who believes that, that a project proposal 
meets the basic criteria of the CFC is most welcome to submit a proposal. What happens? The highest level view of what happens to project proposals are received by the Common Fund for Commodity. And this is in summary, the process up to the decision by the Common Fund to either provide or not provide financing for a project. Every uh, project proposal that comes to the CFC will be read by one of the project managers in the fund and will be discussed in the operations unit. Uh, that's called internal screening by the CFC secretariat. Internal screening checks the basics, the essentials that the project proposal meets all the necessary criteria of the CFC, that we have the complete information and the rest of the presentation will pretty much focus on what is it that we require at this stage so that the project proposal is complete and can be considered for online. After the initial screening by the CFC secretariat, we will prepare each project proposal and send it to an external consultative committee of the Common Fund for Commodities, which consists of nine experts representing different countries and different regions, two, two people from Africa, two people from Latin America, two people from Southeast Asia, one person from China, one person from the OECD, and one person from Russia, uh, will sit in this consultative committee, and they take a whole week uh, currently, currently it's in uh, cyberspace, currently it's on Zoom, otherwise it is in person at the headquarters of the CFC. They take the whole week to go through each project proposal that qualifies for consideration and make a recommendation whether this project proposal is to be recommended uh, for approval by the executive board of the fund. Typically, the consultative committee makes many comments on project proposals and we will send those comments back to you to be able to prepare a submission to the executive board. So if a consultative committee asks some questions, those questions will need to be answered. And this is the penultimate uh, box here on the screen where we will seek communication and additional information from the project proponents to be able to prepare a submission to the executive board. And then the consideration by the executive board follows and the executive board makes the final decision uh, whether the project is going to be offered financing from the CFC. In principle, during the whole process, we might come back to the proponents to ask for more information. If we don't understand something in the proposal, we will come back and we will ask. But of course, the proposal needs to be reasonably complete and in the following slides, pretty much the greatest part of this, uh, we will go through completeness of the proposal, what is required. So first things first, how uh, we recommend uh, you to make the decision whether to apply to the CFC or not. Make sure to check the CFC objectives. On the CFC website, in the open call for proposals, uh, we wrote down what the member countries of the CFC represented by the executive board and the governing council of the CFC expect from the projects receiving CFC financing. Uh, the CFC will also look at the track records of the applicants. That is uh, whether uh, there's evidence of sufficient technical, managerial, and financial skills that the resources of the CFC can be used productively as impact investing funds, delivering real uh, positive outcomes for the beneficiaries of the projects. The completeness and quality of the application, it helps immensely if the application is clearly written. And we can see the logic of how this application is going to work. Uh, transparency and uh, clarity of the financial projections provided with the proposal, also essential because uh, we will need to assess the financial viability of proposal. We do not want to create new unsustainable financial burdens in developing countries. 
So a project needs to be able to justify itself in financial terms. And a financially sustainable business plan. Uh, it's it's uh, something that uh, we will look uh, carefully uh, to make sure that uh, after the pullout of the CFC, in the end, the CFC will uh, pull out of every project uh, after completing its engagement. Uh, after the pullout of the CFC, we want to make sure that the project will not disappear. We want the project to continue after the end of CFC support. And again, we count on you, on our members, to bring us the proposal that can meet this criterion. A few words on uh, the time frame. This is for the current uh, 20th call for proposals. So up to 15 April, we expect to receive applications. Uh, we receive ap applications mostly by email to open call at commonfund.org. The address is posted on the CFC website. From uh, mid-April to the middle of May, we will process the documents. Uh, we will review if uh, the projects uh, meet the basic criteria of the CFC. And this may be the time when we come back for uh, when we come back for more information if something is slightly unclear with the project. In the end of May, we must send the documents to the consultative committee. So uh, uh, a month in advance of the consultative committee, end of May 2022, we will send out the document uh, qualifying for consideration by the consultative committee to the members of the consultative committee. And during the first or rather the last week of June, the consultative committee will meet to consider those projects, to review them and to make a recommendation. After this recommendation, from July until October, we have the time to address any comments that the committee may have raised. Uh, and we need to receive complete answers to those questions uh, to be able to submit the project to the executive board for final approval. And in October 2022, the executive board will make the final decision on the project. The, the decision by the executive board is final. We will communicate uh, about the outcomes of the decision uh, shortly after the meeting in October 22. I saw some uh, hands were raised and lowered. And I would suggest that uh, that uh, we uh, uh, please keep please keep your questions, and we will allocate time in the end to be able to answer because some of the questions may be answered in the call in the co course of the presentation. So, uh, what happens if the executive board approves the project? We will need to conclude uh, the documents to release the money for the project in simple terms. The documents that need to be concluded, they uh, involve a term sheet, uh, due diligence uh, at the desk of the project manager, where we will go through uh, publicly available information to confirm things that the project claims. A project manager would also typically visit the project on site for, for again, for due diligence to make sure that the operation is there and that the facts are accurate. Draft the contract, finalize it, and sign the contract. After we sign the contract, we can release the money. In general, and we are uh, taking it quite seriously, that projects should start as soon as possible after the approval by the executive board. On average, no more than 12 months, uh, one year from, uh, so one year to complete all these documents after the approval by the executive board. Also, uh, please be aware that there is a sunset clause that the CFC can withdraw its financial commitments to any project that did not operationalize within two years of approval by the executive board. We will withdraw the financial commitments to this project so that we can allocate the money 
to a different project that is more prepared to get started. This is, can be considered. Now we will go into the substance. What is it that we expect in the proposals? And as you um, may have seen or may not have seen on the CFC website, there is an application form that is downloadable, uh, application form in Word, and uh, supplements in Excel, which provide the templates for the information that needs to be included in the proposal. A few things to keep in mind that uh, we live in a complex and difficult uh, world. So please be aware that the CFC is not asking for any fees at the application stage for projects. So we will consider all projects coming to us and we will not ask for, the, for any application fees. Later, when project is receiving financing, uh, then in connection with CFC financing, we will expect the project proponents to cover a fair and justifiable share of the legal costs and due diligence costs associated with the proposal. But that would be after approval only. Uh, it, it will be uh, beneficial for us and for the project proponents that a complete and accurate information is contained in the application. So there, there is no uh, benefit to go back and forth uh, seeking for bits of information that could have been included from the start. So uh, it's very much appreciated that the applications are complete and accurate. Uh, because of the high volume of, uh, of, of uh, interest uh, to the CFC financing, uh, we will only be able to respond to project proposals, meaning uh, me meeting the minimum uh, criteria, minimum qualifications for consideration by the CFC. So if you do not hear from the CFC within three months after the deadline for submission, that is uh, April, May, June, July, by middle of July, if you do not hear from the CFC, that means that the proposal has not been successful and has not been taken forward for further consideration. And uh, I don't like to say the words uh, proposal rejected because we do not reject the proposals. We simply focus on those proposals which we can support effectively. Uh, there's a certain exclusion list of activities that the CFC would not finance. Uh, things like gambling, uh, alcohol, tobacco, weapons, uh, things that harm the environment, and so on. The list is on the CFC website. I have been alerted this morning that we are updating this list for greater clarity. So if you cannot find it on the website, uh, please uh, take, uh, take a few days. It will uh, reappear there. Uh, finally, uh, all the information that we receive in connection with project proposals will be used to evaluate, uh, to evaluate the proposal. And it will be shared with the consultative committee, executive board, and the governing council. If the project proposal needs to contain any confidential information, uh, please indicate this clearly. And we will consult with you how best to preserve the confidentiality. So that is, uh, that is, I think, the summary of the general notes on the application form. Now, moving on. Uh, the first section of the application form concerns the organization background. So who is it that, who, who submits the application? Uh, it's, it should not be a problem. It should be very, very clear, straightforward. Uh, we need to know what is the exact registered name of the organization. If it's an NGO, a private company, an investment fund, maybe a branch of government, anybody can apply. And this needs to be indicated what is the particular type of organization seeking CFC financing. Uh, who are the founders of the company? What are the people behind uh, the company? What are the people behind the uh, application? and uh, the formal uh, registration data. When was uh, the organization registered? In which country it's resident? What is the address? And so on. Uh, also, as a matter of general information, the location and target market. So for example, uh, 
uh, for example, a company may be based in one country and may be operating in a different country. So we will all uh, we will all uh, uh, expect to see this information and a brief summary of financing goals for the organization. So what is it? What is it that the CFC financing is requested for in a nutshell? Uh, this is useful to understand the rest of the project. And now that we're coming to financing, uh, before I give the floor to my colleague, I would like to mention the general uh, things that apply to all financing uh, provided by the CFC. We do not provide more than half of the cost of the project under normal circumstances. So the uh, proponents of the project, the people submitting the project, needs to be ready to provide half of the project cost, at least half of the project cost, either themselves or from another financier. A very frequent question that I will respond right away, what is recognized as co-financing? And the simple answer is that if it can be reflected on the financial statements, it will be recognized as co-financing. So if something cannot uh, cannot be reflected in the financial statements, then we will not be able to recognize this as co-financing. Normal duration of uh, three to five years. And the interest rates for CFC financing will be determined based on the risk profile of the project. We have a certain benchmarking system that provides a unified framework for deciding the rates of interest that we can offer to different projects. Once in a while, we get a question on equity financing, whether the CFC can offer equity financing. And uh, it can only be offered where uh, there is no alternative. And mostly this is the case for other impact investing funds. So we may become a, a co-financier of an external impact investing fund. And then this impact investing fund will be uh, dealing with their own projects using a bit of CFC money. If there's equity financing, then the CFC will never take a majority stake. So any CFC involvement in equity would also be below 49%. So I would like now to invite my colleague, uh, Mr. Nikolaus Krome, take uh, over to talk about uh, financing forms offered by the CFC. Yeah, uh, Andre, thank you very much. Uh, again, as by way of introduction, my name is Nikolaus Kromer. I'm the acting chief operations officer at the Common Fund. And also for me, uh, a very good day. And thank you for your interest in the CFC. Yeah, um, what you see here as the next slide is basically what we have on offer. This is our products, yeah, uh, an overview. It starts with a, a term loan. That is basically the classic product uh, for capital expenditure uh, investments. For example, if you seek to improve or rehabilitate your palm oil mill or you want to expand your cocoa plantation by a few hectares, this would be the product that we would have on offer. As uh, mentioned, it goes normally between three to five years as a term. However, uh, sometimes longer, when we think about perennial crops, we can go to five years and we can even provide grace periods if it's justified and if it makes sense. These loans, like all of our other financial products, are tailored. Yeah. So we take an individual look at what, what is your request, what is your business, what is, what is your cash cycle and the like, and we tailor the loan. And that also uh, is valid for uh, the securitization. And here with the term loan, we look how can we collateralize it without strangling our partner, but also with, with making sure that, uh, uh, that there is a decent loan to value uh, for the CFC. Uh, indicatively, and that is uh, uh, also for the uh, trade finance facility, which you see below, our interest rates, and I preempt a lot of questions that are between five and 10%. 
And as a rule of thumb, okay, it depends on, on the risk and the risk assessment is done in the course of uh, when we get to know each other based on the local lending rate. And also then at the end, as a rule of thumb, you can see the more upstream you are located with your business, being primary agriculture is usually associated with a higher risk uh, compared to when you go a little bit more downstream. Moving to trade finance, that is our most popular product at the moment. Uh, it comes from pure trade finance, which we know that is against shipments, uh, shipment documentation, but it can uh, extend up to the point where a company needs to go and purchase raw material out in the field and already requires funds funds for that. And even further, when a company needs to go out and provide funding to a farmer in order to start producing raw material for the company. So that turns out to be then more working capital style. We do this usually structure it as a tripartite agreement in that you would have to provide or bring forward some uh, good off takers, uh, which would need to sign an agreement that uh, against their purchasing order, we would disperse the funds. And whenever uh, the uh, off taker would pay, they would pay first to the common fund. We would take our share and then forward it to you. This is how it usually works. In this case, as I just said, the longer the cash conversion cycle or the longer the funds are outstanding, the more likely we are to ask for other securities. Yeah? And that would be a pledge on inventories or receivables or some kind of guarantees. A good example, live example that we have in our portfolio is, is that there is a uh, company in Kenya that produces avocado oil. Now they require funds in order to go out into the field and purchase the avocado, sometimes even to pre-finance the farmer. Then they need to pick up the avocado, they need to process it into oil, then they need, or they do ship it to Aldi in Europe. Now that takes some time and Aldi itself, like all other supermarkets, take a good 60 days until they make the payment, but then Aldi pays to us. We take our share and then forward it. This is how it usually works. Andre mentioned equity stakes. So far, it is in our mandate, but so far we have not invested into equity of single companies simply because it absorbs too much capacity because we would not want to be a silent uh, equity stakeholder. What we occasionally do is that we do invest equity in impact investing funds with relatively small ticket sizes between 500 and 1,000 and 1 million US dollars. If there are interesting propositions of those kind of funds with a theme, that is commensurate with that of the CFC, that is smallholder agriculture in the wider sense, we always listen. Yeah. Uh, another product uh, that uh, is of great strategic interest to us are development impact bonds. Uh, just very briefly, if you have not heard of it, you are not the only one. It's a relative new product where an implementing partner, be it an NGO or some other institution, claims to produce a certain quantifiable amount of impact uh, with the implementation of a grant-based technical assistance project. And, and, we do, and uh, we do have on the other end a sponsor that is willing to pay for this impact in principle, but only if and to the amount that is, this impact is delivered, then the CFC actually offers to, to play the role of the entity to, that pre-finances this project. And as we, we take the performance risk of it. Now, if there's going to be a lot of impact, then we are all happy and we get our money back and we even get a premium. If not, then we lose out. And, and we believe that this model has a future because sponsors, uh, grant sponsors uh, do no longer have to pay out in advance against a claim that then materialize or not, but they will then actually only pay against delivery of impact. Last but not least, we have fast track proposals. Now, these are proposals with a smaller ticket size, up to 300,000 US dollars, that can be submitted under our fast track procedure. So, also goes a little faster. But please note that in, in recent years, the success rate of, of uh, this product has been small. These products need to be highly innovative, yeah, and they need to be of strategic importance for the CFC and also need to provide substantial additionality. If you at the new slide, Andre, you will see, actually, you will see what you will see in the project proposal. This is uh, basically a, a screenshot on the left-hand side. You just take what, you, what the finances that you need. It doesn't mean that you can only take one. 
uh, in many cases, a term loan requires working capital. So you might also take two. Then you put the amount in, the use of funds, the tenor, and the about the amount or what what is it in, in collateral that that you would have to offer. One note to trade finance is that uh, these trade finance facilities are given for one year, but once we have made a decision uh, uh, to enter into what we would call a partnership uh, uh, with a company, then we do this in a framework agreement, being that that after one year we we usually renew the facility. Next slide, please, Andre. That's the same. Also, a screenshot you see here on the left-hand side: equity, if it's if it's investment funds, and for the development bonds. And I think we can move straight away to the next slide, where you see about fast tracks. Andre, please. Next slide. Okay, and then hop over already to the next slide which uh, is for your information, or this is maybe for all those, uh, should you be an investee of CFC already, this is applicable for you, Yeah, uh, is that uh, um, due to the effects of COVID-19, we have opened up a window, a special window for financing with a simplified uh, approval mechanism uh, to assist in overcoming liquidity gaps uh, that occurred uh, um, as an effect of COVID-19. For example, think about the container crisis. Yeah, you simply cannot get your produce to Europe, but you need the money already, uh, which is locked in there in order to pay farmers for the next season. Or off takers in Europe are not buying in the amount as they used to be, so you sit on inventory and that ties up your money. Yeah. So uh, in a in a nutshell, really, uh, if you are applicable only for that, if we already know you, if you have already been a partner or are a partner of the CFC, otherwise it does not. Okay, next slide, please. Thank you, Andre. Okay, and now the application form, we move to project description. Next slide, please. And this is the first heading that you meet there, management and operations. So what do we want to know here? Uh, we want to know about management and operation of the proponent. The key question is here, who are the shareholders? Are there any other ultimate beneficiaries? Yeah, and is the company part of a holding company with sister companies, etc.? What is the context? Yeah? Is there a board? And if there is a board, who sits on the board and why? What are the credentials? Yeah? And then to the management, yeah, who are the key persons? What do they bring to the table? Complementary skills, expertise, and in this context, CVs, yeah, resumes are usually very helpful for us to see who is actually in charge of the operations of that business. The next one would be the chapter 3.2, in which we will ask you the questions on what is your current business model? How does it look like? Now, that's a simple question, but we find that many proponents have difficulties. Uh, I think it is, is important to say that uh, uh, please expect that we as the CFC do not know nothing about your company. So really, it is to start with, uh, uh, we are company X. We produce and process X, Y, Z products for exports to ABC countries. Huh? It's as simple as that. And then become a little bit more explicit or in detail. Where do you source from? What processing steps do you do? Like when have you been established? Where are you located? Who are your target customers? The number of employees, full-time staff, part-time staff. What are your sales production volumes? Huh? Capacity for production, processing. So, so really, it's, it's the basics. So uh, when we continue reading, we have a clear idea, yeah, uh, what you do, how you do it, and also on what size level you do it. Yeah? In many proposals, we do have difficulties to interpret the business case and with whom we are dealing because the proponents are immediately switching or it's a mindset of what they want to do. But uh, for us, in order to understand whether it makes sense for us and what, what the proponent wants to do, we need to know what is he or she doing right now. Yeah? It does not need to be long, but it needs to be concise, yeah? And with figures. If you have figures, please put them in. Next slide, please, Andre. The next uh, chapter that, that uh, is in that uh, um, uh, questionnaire, in that template is market on market opportunities. What is around you and how you fit in that market, yeah? And it would start with, with uh, for us, in chapter four, one, market position and competition. 
We want to know in what market you are. Is it a competitive market with a lot of pressure? Are you very differentiated to an extent that you fill a niche? Yeah? Uh, do you compete on price? Do you compete on quality? Do you not compete at all because you have such a unique selling proposition that it's not necessary? Yeah? Do you have more than one product? If you have, which is your main revenue generator? So we get an idea of, of what this is about. Yeah? And one key information that we want to know in that respect is how do you currently secure your supply? Yeah? Is it from smallholders? Is it from spot markets? Is it with longer term contracts? Yeah, uh, these are, this is the information we want. Are you even integrated backwards? Do you have farms yeah? uh, in which you, you regulate your own supply? This is especially of great interest to us because this is usually where the social impact lies, which we take a, a great interest in. And then who are your main off takers and how do you market your product? Yeah? How do you ship? What's your relationship to your, to your off takers? Is it long term five year relationship that you have to each off taker? Or is it on the spot market at arm's length? Yeah? What are the barriers to entry into your market? Very interesting because it determines the, the, the competition that can be expected. Who are then your main competitors? Please provide us with the names and also with size uh, and, and, and any other quality information that you might have. In that uh, subchapter also, we want to know a little bit about other macro level information yeah, that could be of interest, any legal issues, environmental issues, political, technological. Yeah? Is the industry that you are in expecting any game changing technology or any legal change that, that, that might, be of, of, might be a chance or, or a threat? Yeah? Is there any new technology that will make other technology obsolete? Yeah? This is the information. Under 4.2, yeah? there you have a free go where yeah, do we want to know or we want you to express in a few sentences what makes you better than your competitors. Yeah? That, that's really a, 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 a chapter where you can sell yourself. Yeah? Where do you see your strength? Yeah? Be it in your staff, be it in you being so efficient, product, price, leadership, customers. Yeah? Please let us know. So three, the opposite. We will ask you in the proposal, how, where do you see your weakest points? Yeah? Where do you see you need to do better, try to work out any relationship, uh, uh, and and, and uh, so, uh, yeah, try to work it out, what comes next and um, where we can see, okay, here is the weakness and that's, and for that reason, I need funding because I want to, I, I, I want to remedy this weakness. Uh, so that could be the move over to the next chapter, Andre, when you can move to the next slide, please where we are going to ask you for your proposed operational model and that we then can go to the future. Yeah. So based on, on what you have described in the previous chapter and what your business is right now, there you have the opportunity to elaborate on, on what your plans are with CFC funding. Yeah? How will your business look like after you have invested? Where will the effects be? What changes will take place? Will you increase your capacity? Will you diversify your product range? Will you go out in another country? Will you have better quality? That is what is interesting. The next one would be that we would in 5.2 ask you for clients and, and uh, uh, how will your customer base change? Yeah? Will you attract new customers? Yeah? Will you enter new markets with new products or just deepen the markets that you are in? Will there be a change in distribution channels from informal to formal? Uh, will you change or, or will you move into different export markets? And very interesting also for us is in that respect, what currency will you be selling in? Next one on supply, yeah, that is a, I would say, a crucial chapter uh, because what is it that you require? Usually when you uh, invest and grow your business, you, you need more supply. So question number one is what is it? What is the supply, the raw material? And how will you secure an assumed higher supply requirement? Yeah? Will you diversify your sourcing? Will you engage with outgrowers? Will you import? Will you look for, for substitutes? Yeah. And what kind of risks are you facing with this? How will you structure your supply? Will you continue to at arm's length or will you start to engage in long-term contracts, organize your supply chain? How is pricing of your raw material? Is it fluctuating? Is it politically influenced? That's an interesting thing for us. Is it local supply? Will you supply from the world market? These are the questions that are of interest. Next chapter 5.4, we want to know about your future production process yeah we would like to know any changes in the production or processing process so one perspective is really do you add additional value now through adding or improving processing 
Have you become traceable, organic certified? Have you, has your quality improved? Yeah. Did you get any any uh, other certification that that improves the quality and also the, the added value of your product? The other aspect is: Will you need more skilled staff? Yeah. Are you engaging into a new processing technology where you need to be trained, which is not fully under control? Yeah. Is there a risk of failure in the new technology? Yeah. And last but not least, also very uh, very important: Do you have access to electricity or other sources of stable energy? Yeah? That 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 can be a very hampering point. Finally, under 5.5, five, yeah, uh, uh, we would like to know if you plan to apply any innovation alongside the new investment that you want to make. Yeah? For example, are you planning because you have grown to, to, to enter or to en engage with digital enterprise uh, resource planning systems? Yeah? That's just an example. Will you start to engage with blockchain certification? in order to become traceable or do any other sort of traceability? Will you become organic? Will, will you start with carbon certific, uh, certificate training? Yeah? Will you use, use renewable energy? Or, I, I mean, on the other side, less spectacular, but still an innovation for us, will you be the first one to commercially grow peanuts in Zambia? That's a live case that we just had. This, you are developing an industry in the country, something that we find highly innovative. Okay. Um, before we come to the next slide, and I hand back over to Andre, who will talk about development impact. I, I just a, a brief summary. Uh, please, when you submit or when you draft the proposal, be as concise as possible, and try to underline your information with quantitative figures wherever you can. Yeah, that when you talk about yields, production level, staff, and the like. Try to avoid what is usually known as as fogging with too much information and too much data because we will be simply overwhelmed and, and, and you run the risk that we miss the point and we do not want to miss the point, yeah? We do read and we do, we do appreciate each and every proposal that comes along alongside. We are fully aware that no business in this world is perfect, so do not be afraid on self-highlighting your deficiencies and possible risks that your business is exposed to, yeah? At this proposal stage, we need to get a clear high level picture on your business to see if the business case can be sustainable. Yeah? Because that's the basis for any development impact, which then becomes what we would then sustainable development. Okay, back to you, Andre, for chapter number six. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Nikolaus. And I will be uh, going uh, to development impact which, uh, by the way, I was answering some questions in the chat box uh, and uh, development impact is uh, the answer to some of the questions. So uh, the general question is whether a project of a particular type is eligible to apply. And the general answer is if the project deals with commodities in a member country of the CFC and can demonstrate development impact, then we would be interested to see, to have a look at these projects. So uh, four small subsections in development impact that you will see in the application form. First, a 6.1, just explain what the impact is going to be about in a concise, uh, uh, concise and free form language. We will expect uh, in section 6.2, uh, we will expect the breakdown of impacts by the Sustainable Development Goals. And you know, the Sustainable Development Goals adopted by the United Nations in 2015. Uh, there are five of them selected as the core Sustainable Development Goals for the CFC. So we will expect you uh, to indicate how the project impacts, impacts uh, poverty, food security, gender equality, uh, decent work, economic growth, and reduction in inequalities. If you believe that your project concerns other sustainable development goals as well, uh, please do include it, it is useful. Uh, the Excel uh, template spreadsheet attached with the application form contains more details on the same. Uh, the impacts will also have to be seen in the context of the end beneficiary of the project. So, the beneficiary group, for example, smallholder farmers are uh, producing coffee that will be marketed in premium markets. Uh, if their income level 
is well below the national average, then that makes them a special vulnerable group in the country. And the project will be able to demonstrate higher impact in the context of uh, the particular problems facing uh, the smallholder coffee farmers in the particular area. Uh, to characterize this, uh, please use as much as possible the uh, objective indicators. And that is uh, the average uh, GDP in the country concerns, the income inequality scores, any identification of uh, special vulnerable groups like the poor, the youth, the, the, you know, the, the city, the urban poor, uh, the refugees, involvement of any vulnerable groups uh, typically enhance the impact of the project. Uh, a significant and rapidly developing area is the environmental and social impact of projects. Uh, the Common Fund uses a special uh, social and environmental risk management system, uh, SEMS, which was developed for us by the International Labour Organization, and that applies across our projects. So we will be assessing how the project performs in environmental and social terms. So for example, if we install a uh, coffee washing station to produce green parchment coffee, uh, washing station requires water and washing sta station produces uh, waste products. So this needs to be addressed because in uh, general, the CFC would not uh, finance projects that deliver negative environmental impacts. A positive environmental impact will be an added plus in the consideration of the projects. So uh, moving on uh, to financial performance, uh, I believe I need to give a microphone back to uh, Nikolaus. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, indeed, uh, alongside uh, your narrative uh, business case, uh, the proposal will ask you also, we would like to assess the financial strength uh, and the performance of your business. And, and we do indeed, we do this in, in chapter seven of the proposal. Uh, and for that, we ask you to fill in two Excel sheet templates, which can be found on our website. And uh, when, when you uh, look up the call for proposals, which we will also show after, after this slide. One is balance sheet and the other one, uh, um, not surprisingly, uh, it is the profit and loss uh, statement. And we require you to fill in the factual past financing figures of the last three years. And then we'll ask you for a forecast for the next couple of years, at least for the years of the term that you apply for of the loan of the CFC. Um, we have to look at these figures in a structured manner. And, uh, and, and the CFC, we, we, we need to grasp the general notion of those figures quickly. And that that's, is why the, the, uh, the Excel sheet or the template of, of these two uh, documents is pre-structured. And that is uh, why we kindly ask you not to amend the template. Rather try to make your figures fit into the structure. Yeah? And when you do that, <clears throat> I know it's sometimes difficult, try to ensure that we still get a true and fair view on your financials. Yeah? It will save us a lot of work if we do not have to find out at a much later stage that some figures do not match with, with audited financial statements, which we will analyze a, a, at a later stage anyhow. Yeah? Um, again, we know that there is hardly any business that comes along with a shiny, super solid balance sheet and the regular high net profits and tons of free cash, yeah? So in the proposal, and that is under 771, you'll have the chance of commenting on the tables, on the balance sheet, on the profit and loss statement and provide insights and explanations on the trends that can be seen and also on any up or downward figure that seems odd, looks funny or whatever, please explain it uh, if there has been extraordinary event. So we are used to seeing non-perfect uh, uh, financial figures, yeah? Under 7.2, we will ask you for uh, your main assumptions that uh, uh, on which you base your uh, projections. Yeah. So if you if you project a hockey stick growth, steep growth eternally, we need to know on what basis you do that. Yeah. That means please inform us 
on the assumed prices, on the assumed volumes that you produce, that you will sell uh, various product lines and whatever that you base your financial projections on. So we do get an idea what this is about. Under 7.3, yeah, we would like to know who, with whom you already uh, are doing business, who is funding you, uh, uh, who are your finance providers, what type of funding you are being provided and, and also the amount. Yeah? And we would also like to know what the additionality of CFC financing it is under that chapter. So be it that you do not find additional finance in your country, uh, uh, in your region, that interest rates are prohibitive, that the loan product is simply not available. Yeah? These are the kind of things that we would like to know. Because it will be difficult for us to get into business with you if you are merely looking for a loan that is 1% cheaper than, than an offer from a local bank. Yeah? We, don't want to, uh, uh, we don't want to do that. Finally, in, in that chapter, yeah, we are asking you on, on the main risks that you are facing and, and that you might face when you grow with CFC funding. Again, be open and transparent. There is no business in the world without any risks. And we know that anything related to agriculture is risky. It's our business. We can take it. Yeah. I'll move to the next slide. Yeah, you'll see this is the uh, uh, profit and loss uh, uh, statement that we uh, uh, structured as we would like to see it. And, and you'll find an Excel sheet uh, uh, on our website. There's no surprise on the left side of, of what, uh, how this is grouped and structured. Uh, then you see that we want to have a historical, then we want the current financial year. If you do have some management accounts or whatever that, that already cover some parts of the year, and then we want to have a future projection. If you move to the next slide, Andre, please. No, yeah, it's the uh, balance sheet again. Uh, also, you see on the left side how we would like to have the structured, historical, current, and future. Both, um, please fill out both in US dollars. That makes things a lot easier. And if you have to, uh, if you have to exchange something, uh, let us know what the, what the exchange rate is that you are using. So, next slide, please. Andre will move us to any other information. So. That is a list that you'll find, which we would like of documents that we would like you to provide to us uh, next to, to uh, the, the, the core proposal. On the left-hand side, you see what is required, what we kindly ask you to, to submit. So these are audited financial statements yeah, for the last three years. If you sent the last four years, the better, but it's not, it's not required. Financial projections, uh, including balance sheet, P and R and also cash flow forecast. So we would like to see and also like to know that you have made uh, or put some thinking into, okay, what am I going to do with the CFC loan and what is it going to do with the business financially? Yeah. The next uh, bullet point, you see impact indicators. Also, that is part of, uh, of, of that Excel sheet package where we would like to ask you to fill in these impact indicators in that spreadsheet. Um, company registration documents, yeah, just to make sure that you exist. And uh, the final one is a group chart yeah, uh, uh, where we see legal ownership, but that is only applicable in case that, that your company or the company that is uh, uh, requesting the loan is, is part of, uh, of several legal entities of the group. On the right-hand side is something that we do not mandatorily require, but we recommend to submit. If you have a business plan, please send it. If you have management or organizational charts, please send them. Much easier for us. CVs, I think I've mentioned uh, before, uh, the key staff of, uh, uh, we can assess staff better. Articles of association, if applicable. And if you have any environmental and social impact assessment, if you have applied for a previous loan, or if you have uh, participated in, in any other activity that has required you to do one, even if it's two, three or four years old, if you have one, please send it. Okay, I think the next slide, Andre, is already over to you again. Thank you. Uh, yes, um, thank you very much, uh, Nikolaus. So we have almost uh, concluded the presentation of, uh, of the application process and application form. So just a few more items remaining. Uh, one is the impact indicators. So as I mentioned, we are quite serious about assessing impacts of the project and impacts is a critical consideration in deciding whether the project is going to be offered financing or not. We use the International uh, Impact Reporting and Investment Standards, IRIS, as the reporting guide. 
uh, it's just a catalog of indicators that you can use in alignment with sustainable development goals. And you can have a look at the website of IRIS for this, or you can have a look and or you can have a look in the uh, Excel template spreadsheet where there's some more explanations how to complete the IRIS indicators for the sustainable development goals one, two, five, eight, and 10 that are targeted as a priority by the CHC. Most appropriate metrics can be selected, so there is a lot of flexibility, but this need not be forgotten. The basic detail about the applicants, uh, so please indicate uh, whom we are talking to, the type of organization, the country where you registered, uh, the registration details, website address, if they exist. Uh, there were questions in the chat box uh, regarding the possibility of financing a consortium. And a consortium uh, in many countries would not be able to complete this chapter nine because consortium does not have a legal personality in, in many countries. And without, so we need a legal personality, either a registered organization or a physical person, but we need somebody who can actually put signatures on the documents. And final uh, section, uh, all of these need to be answered positively. So uh, the proponents need to concern that they have the right to submit the proposal on behalf of the organization, that it is in a member country, that UN Global Compact is observed and will be observed by the proponents, that there's no current uh, litigation against the proponent, that all information is uh, true and accurate, and all the information will be made for consideration uh, by, the, uh, by the CFC governing bodies, by the consultative committee, executive board, and the governing council. And any confidential information needs to be clearly indicated so we can uh, look how we can preserve the confidentiality. So uh, that uh, concludes the presentation. I believe we are slightly over time. Uh, we did manage to answer a few questions in, uh, in the chat box.